Well, we are pulling corn out in this cornfield. It's about 30 by 50. And this is G90. Most of you know this, but when the silks are dead, it's ready. So you just basically break it off. And there it is. Now, I'll pull, I'll, uh, I'll shuck a couple of these just to show you the corn. But what, that's not how we're preserving it. I will show you how we're going to freeze it in just a second. So stay tuned for that. Easiest, easiest way. No blanching. No nothing like that. So we have had some earworm damage, um, even though I treated three different times. But hopefully, hopefully not on this one. I want it to be pretty for you. Yep, there's an earworm on it. You got a little bit. It's just hard to get them. There's one with a little bit of earworm damage on it, but we'll just, uh, doesn't have any earworm damage on it anymore. Some of them have some pollination issues. Each one of these silks, these little strings, each one of those is connected to a kernel sticking up out of that corn cob. In other words, sticking up here, each one of those is connected to a kernel. And each one of those have to be pollinated by the tassels on top of the corn stalk. Those are the tassels. That's where the male pollinator falls down on the silk of the ear of corn. And that's why you're supposed to plant corn close together, not in some long skinny rows, because they just, they, they need that, they need the wind, they're wind pollinated. Bees don't do anything for them. Strictly wind and gravity pollinated. So, so this has a few missing kernels. Some of those did not get pollinated. And I think it's because it's on there on this outside row. It's very south side. This is south, and we had all during the pollination process when the silks were silks were just coming out. We had a hard south wind blowing this way, so I've noticed that the the ears uh, on the inside of the um, cornfield here, the little patch, are pollinated a whole lot better than the ears on this outside southern edge because the wind I think was blowing it that way and blew it away from these ears here on these stalks. So that's my hypothesis on that. But they're still pretty good. That's not bad. That's not bad. Break off the damage if you do have a little earworm damage. Now sometimes those earworms, <laughs> sometimes those earworms really get happy and get way down in that ear. But anyway, let me show you what we will do with the, with the ones that we pull that really look good and we don't think there's any earworm damage on them. So what I'm doing, I'm cutting it off, eh, usually a little bit closer than that. And uh, I've taken off most of the, the little leaves that kind of hang on, that stick out, cut most of those off. And uh, because it's got a little bit of the kernel showing, uh, I'm wrapping it in aluminum foil. Uh, we have frozen them just in the shucks, in the leaves like this. Uh, if it's completely covered, like that one is completely covered. We have just thrown them in the freezer like that. In fact, we put about 20, 30 of them in a pillowcase one year, uh, froze them like that and they were fine. But um, I was watching Jay Null and he does some of his um, in uh, foil. And then he says his preferred way is just, just, to, just to freeze them just like that. But he says if he sees any uh, exposed kernels, then he eats them. Well, I've, we can't eat that many. <laughs> so, cause we've got quite a few of them like that. So to cover that in the freezer, to help uh, to cover that, I'm just wrapping them all in foil, whether they're, whether they're showing any kernels or whether they're not, I'm wrapping them in foil. And we're gonna pull, oh, four or five dozen probably out of that little patch. And um, I've already given, uh, bunch of them away uh, so we have a good harvest even though the cows got in it 
even though the cows got in it. So we're tickled. Got a lot of corn. Putting it up. Hope you got some too. We're gone.